Welcome, 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 boys and girls, geeks and nerds, to another episode of Geek to Me Radio. Today we are joined in studio by the Killer Bees, Beth Naki, Ben Ritchie, and Bob Singleton, talking all things horror movie related. You'll be able to call in later. We'll have more guests and more. Stand by. This is our first annual Halloween special. We are joined in studio by Bob Singleton. Good afternoon. Ben Ritchie. Hello there. And Beth Naki. Hello. Today we'll be talking about horror movies, our favorites, uh, as well as some of the best and worst remakes. If you would like to call in at any time, toll free 855-770-1260 and Joey V will get you on the air with us. So Halloween, that's the time everyone breaks out the scary movies. You can go to Best Buy and they've got a larger selection in stock. You can pick them up. Going around the room, what's your favorite, absolute, all-time, number one, (laughs) scary movie? We'll start with Beth. Uh, I'd have to go with the 1963 version of The Haunting. Good choice. My favorites are actually the ones that are the comedies. Like I, I, I go to like Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein and Ghostbusters and uh, the new Ghostbusters. What you meant? Oh, I will punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't mean that. One. Okay, uh, yeah, I didn't think it was that bad. Well, I hear that from everybody pretty much. So Ben's the only one. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't given it a shot yet. I'm... All right. Well, it, when you do. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. I'll come back and we can talk. Okay. Bob? Well, I think if we're talking uh, theatrical, it would probably be uh, 1987's uh, Hellraiser. Hellraiser. That's the guy who has the uh, the hockey mask and the machete? Is that <laughs> no, that? no, no. This would be the uh, film adaption directed by Clive Barker with oh. uh, Pinhead. Yes. Yes, I was teasing, of course. Yeah. Yes. Uh, mine would have to be... The Changeling with George C. Scott from 1980. Nice. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, that one, anything with spooky, dead, creepy children usually does it for me, which is The Haunting, the original Haunting. Uh, the Ring. Yeah. I did the like ring. The Changeling, though. Good choice. Yeah. My there's... metal. I, I quote that all the time. Nobody gets what I'm talking about. But it makes me happy. So. Are, you, are you the child killed in the house? <laughs> were you, are you the Cora? child yeah. who got run over by, by the, the cold, cold cuts? Cut. Yeah. <laughs> My friend, we were watching it. He said, did he say the kid got killed with cold cuts? I said, no, no. <laughs> coal <laughs> cart. Cole card. If you don't know what we're talking about, check it out. Uh, you can get it. I know I saw it at V Stock for like six bucks. Yeah, it's on cheap. Blu-ray. FYE had a copy for like six ninety nine. Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. So check it out. It's uh, so those are some. And again, if you've got a scary movie, if you want to call us eight five five seven seven zero one two six zero. But if you just want to sit there and listen, that's fine too. You don't need to call in. <laughs> so, are there any uh, Halloween traditions you guys normally partake in? We'll go the other way this time. Start with Bob. Well, uh, when we don't have a party, typically my wife and I will uh, turn off all the lights so that we don't have the trick-or-treaters coming around. But then we'll uh, pull out, uh, have a couple of friends over, watch some of the more comedic uh, Halloween-type films. And as the evening goes on, go into the more intense, scarier ones that she'll have nothing to do with. So, so you go down in the basement, turn off the lights? Because I think kids ruin Halloween. I mean, just I'm going to be honest <laughs> with you. They, they spoil it for me. I mean, if you're going to buy all that candy, why be giving it away? I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. I kind, of, I kind of have to side with the kids because any... Any excuse to dress up like an idiot and go beg your neighbors for candy. Okay. I, you, that's a you good need one. an excuse Agreed. for that? In what? fact, that's where I'm going. Well, you get away this. with it. Yeah, so. I can tell. You're already kind of made up. Yes. <laughs> um, any Halloween traditions, Ben? Uh, I spend the entire month watching horror movies. Mm-hmm. And anyone that's a friend with me on Facebook, social network, they uh, they get blitzed with my 31 days of Halloween. Yeah, both I, of us do, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> both, both of my friends both are of, in yeah. this room. <laughs> yes. 
So, I, yeah, I, I watch just horror movies all month long, and then this weekend is when uh, the parties are, so I'll, I'll find a costume party somewhere. And, yeah. And then uh, spend the rest of the evening killing people randomly in the streets. Well, that that's, uh, you have to dress up in the clown. It's regulated. 2016, you have <laughs> to be a clown to kill people theme, on the streets, yeah. so just beware. Uh, just to be clear, we don't endorse killing on the show, but... Uh, we just all put that float up. down here. <laughs> See, that's that's probably number three on my list, I think, is It. Yeah. Hey. That's a good one. That's a good one. Beth? Having Halloween traditions? Uh, not really. My whole life, I like to live my life as if it's Halloween every day. Um, you got a very Morticia Adams vibe about you. I say that in James. the kindest possible Thank way. You. I would only take it in the kind yeah. of way. Um, you know, but I, I do enjoy, especially uh, in October, breaking out the, the horror movies. I try to do at least one or two a day. Um, you know, and, and that also goes for the TV shows. I, I do love the Adams Family TV show, so I love you know going back and, and especially TV shows with Halloween episodes. Mm-hmm. So I really like breaking those out. I enjoy the. Uh, I think it was season three, no season four of uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, mm. the Halloween from that one where they all this previous season they got turned into whatever their costumes was. Right by Ethan. So Rain. Seth yeah. Green, okay. Seth Green as Oz shows up at the party regularly dressed, and they said, "Who are you supposed to be?" He points to the lame tag and says, "Hello, my name is God." Just in case they get changed again, he wants to be able to be helpful. So I then Xander dresses up as James Bond. So they learn their lesson. That was a great mm-hmm. Halloween episode. So what about favorite TV Halloween episodes? Start with Beth. Go ahead. Um, well, I mean, the, the Buffy ones. I did like the first one, the one that you uh, mentioned previously about when, when Ethan Rain, it turns out a, a friend of, Rip, of uh, Giles, uh, is running the the Halloween store and, and all the costumes because you know Buffy thinks that's what Angel wants so she she dresses up like that the you know, 16th century the courtesan damsel, right right and then he's just like mm, mm, no those, those <laughs> ladies were annoying as hell so you know that was you can't say annoying episode. on the air by the way right <laughs> <laughs> then I don't know how I'm going to talk about you James so get out <laughs> <sighs> turn Joey turn her mic off for the rest of the show she's done <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, TV show, Halloween episode, Ben? TV shows, I like, uh, I, I got to go for the animated stuff at this point. Treehouse the Simpsons Horror. Treehouse of Horrors. Oh, yeah. Um, How even, do you choose from those? We're 25 of those in. <laughs> you don't. I, I, the Monkey's Paw episode is that one that always one. comes to mind. And I, I tend to always throw in a Bart quote of, you know, <laughs> I can do that. I just don't want to. I, I use that so often. Um and then even uh, episodes of the old animated real Ghostbusters because those, oh, yeah. those were always the ones where they fought Sam Hain, the mm-hmm. big pumpkin-headed mm-hmm. demon. And those, yeah, I have to I have to work those into my viewing every year. Yeah, I just bought the uh, collection of those on DVD. It was mm-hmm. like all four seasons or whatever it was for like 20 bucks. Yeah. So you can't go wrong there. Bob? Well, I think as far as uh, scary television would go, uh, a couple episodes of The X-Files have always uh, been favorites. Uh, Bad Blood. Uh you know, any episode where, you know, vampires are living among mm, us. Yeah. And uh, the infamous episode, Home. That oh, the peacock yeah. Family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, something about that just says Halloween. That know, was Halloween one of the most time. controversial. I noticed in some of the syndication, they actually won't air that mm-hmm. in it some countries. Episode, yeah. yeah. And even here, it was, I think it was banned for a while before it was lifted finally in, what, five years ago or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah, that's, that's a very creepy episode. Just it's disturbing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not good. So uh, costumes, uh, have you guys already got yours selected? No. <laughs> she means yes, because clearly she's, she's already half dressed. Yeah. Well, I don't know. That, I I, this might be hair. her daily wear. I it could need, be. Well, it, it sort of kind of is. Yeah. Dress, um, she's wearing black. You can't tell the difference from day to day. It's... I, uh, I still need to spray my hair red, but I'm going as the it was Ruby Gloom. The It was an animated series. It's a Pokemon, isn't it? Uh, well, Gloom? Uh, she's no. adorable. So um, <laughs> It's from the from the animated series. It's basically about a, a happy little goth girl, and she lives in a, a house with all of these friends. And, it, it, you know, it's for children, but it also, you know, isn't strictly for children they also mm-hmm. have it's very well written i really appreciate it i think so. most animation is that way they like aim at kids but the the writing and the humor is usually way up here where it's over their heads but they got you know we all get it right so. benjamin costume uh not really no i kind of got caught by surprise this year i've got a jester thing at home i can throw together but... it's they moved it to the 31st this year that's probably what <laughs> caught you off guard it's not usually <laughs> he was in did, scotland see i didn't get that uh, memo i did not get that memo yeah I've been a I've been a bit sidetracked. So you're going as a jester? Uh, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. I'm going to have to go from here straight to the Halloween Superstore and see if I can throw something together. <laughs> so if you're following Ben on Facebook, stay tuned and uh, see, we'll see what he comes up with later tonight. Bob? 
this year, not anything in particular. Uh, previous year, done the Crow, uh, Jedi Knight. Um, I do have a Edward Nigma costume for a certain project I've been working on that nice. may make an appearance sometime in the near future. I saw on, uh, I can't remember who it was I follow on Twitter, but they, they showed their costume. They have just a blue leotard, face painted blue. And I thought they were going to go with like the, uh, from Arrested Development when he was in the Blue Man Group. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. And he, he wrote that uh, his costume is Windows 10. He's just going to walk around stopping people and say, this will only take a few minutes, <laughs> which I thought was brilliant. I mean, that, that's, uh, that's very original. I like stuff like that. Yeah. I'm going to go as Han Solo and Best Ben Han Solo, jacket, not vest. And then Grimlock, my dog, will be dressed as Yoda, so we're going to be a pair of Force ghosts. Because oh, nice, now yeah. Han Solo's dead. Spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> I did like the idea of just putting on a, a black suit, putting the, pulling the hair back, and holding a, a plastic sign that's got the GIF logo, and just walk around with my arms up in the air like I don't know where I am as the lost Travolta. Oh, oh. that would be perfect. <laughs> See, that would be great. Yeah. Well, we'll come back with more Halloween talk after the break and again if you want to call in 855-770-1260 we'll be back with more on geek to me radio best part of the song was always Vincent Price's narrative at the end, which always made me scared when I was a little kid and I'd go and hide somewhere. <laughs> but I'd still listen to the whole thing anyway. But uh, We are back in studio with Bob Singleton, Ben Ritchie, and Beth Naki, the Killer Bees, for our first annual Halloween episode of geek to me Radio. And I want to remind you, our fine sponsor at Historic St. Charles, you want to go check out their website, historicstcharles.com, this weekend, tonight. Actually, all day today, 11 a.m. until 8 p.m. tonight. You can go check out Legends and Lanterns on South Main Street. If you're familiar with Christmas traditions, and you know they have all the characters out there walking around, it's just like that except for Halloween. So you can go out there and you can meet Igor or Igor if you're a Gene Wilder fan. Uh, You can meet Lizzie Borden. You can meet Vlad the Impaler. Uh, Lots of people, you know, you want to kind of stay away from Lizzie Borden because she's got a temper right here. Um, Ask her parents. Too soon. (laughs) Too soon. But Legends and Lantern goes on, if you can't make it today, tomorrow, noon until 5. It's all along South Main Street. You can check out the Facebook page for that, facebook.com slash legendsandlanterns slash. Has never been more appropriate because it's a Halloween. (laughs) And, uh, of course, visit historicstcharles.com. They've got events going all year round. And we're very proud to have the City of St. Charles as a sponsor. That's historicstcharles.com. Follow them on Twitter as well. Back to the show, our Halloween-themed episode, we were talking about uh, movies, favorite TV shows, costumes. If you want to chime in at all, 855-770-1260. And to sweeten the deal, if you call in, let us know your favorite scary movie. Bob Singleton actually brought a couple of giveaways. If you're a fan of the horror genre, and this is the time of year to be a fan, uh, Bob, what would you bring in? Well, uh, I've got a couple selections from Full Moon Entertainment, who was uh, the name in VHS and DVD horror back in the day. The first is Demonic Toys, kind of a playoff of on Chucky. Another is a werewolf slash Beauty and the Beast story called Meridian, uh, noted for uh, starring Sherilyn Fenn of Twin Peaks. And uh, if we get somebody that comes with a really good answer, we have a, a Puppet Master collection. The first three original Puppet Master films, as well as Puppet Master 10 Axis Rising, which I happen to have been uh, an executive producer. For. What? So, what? I'm in the credits. Check so, it out. I'm so there. see, and, and Beth said Bob will autograph it for you if you twist his arm. <laughs> so you can call in. Uh, once again, the number is 855-770-1260. If you're listening, and as always, I find that hard to believe, then you can uh, call in and uh, give us your favorite sorry, scary movie. what was that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're talking all things Halloween. Remakes. There's a lot of scary movie remakes. Um, occasionally, one will be good. I think 13 Ghosts is an example. That wasn't a bad one. The new 13 Ghosts, it had... Uh, I can never remember his real, the actor's real Tony name. Tony Shalhoub. Tony Shalhoub, thank you. I always remember him as Antonio Scarpacci from The Wings. <laughs> but he was in that along with Matthew Lillard. Right. And uh, fantastic movie. The ghosts were very creepy. Uh, the premise was good. 
went back and decided to watch the original, and it's terrible. It's, it didn't mm-hmm. yeah. fare well. One of the ghosts is literally a glow-in-the-dark skeleton that you can see the strings on. <laughs> it's just not good. But those those movies are fun in other ways. <laughs> yes, yeah. You can mystery science you know, the, the crap out of those. Oh, yeah. Uh, any particular remakes that you guys are a fan of or not a fan of? Ben? Um, the I think probably the best horror remake was the American version of The Ring. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it kind of excised a lot of extraneous elements, like a certain character, the, the father character was a telepath, and so it, it focused the horror more on the story of Samara, and it's just a really well-made movie, and for me, one of the cre- creepiest movies Very creepy, ever. yeah. You can't watch TV with the lights off, and then if the phone rings, you're always kind of... Uh, another one would be um, uh, the 70s version of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Donald Sutherland. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, I was told that was kind of a sequel to the original. I read a big, someone wrote a big article. You, you can definitely embrace it that way because Kevin McCarthy of the original makes a cameo, mm-hmm. basically reenacting the final moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, uh, Body Snatchers was then remade again in the 90s mm-hmm. where they set it on a military base, and that was... Uh, it's okay. It's not great. It's entertaining. But then uh, the same story was recycled again a few years ago with Daniel Craig and Nicole Kidman, and it's utterly forgettable, so I guess they watered it down too much at that point. Yeah, I remember seeing the poster for that one. I didn't actually get to go see the movie, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tom Savini's remake of uh, Night of the Living Dead you is like pretty that good. One. I do I like it. It's It's... You know, it, it, <laughs> we got in an argument back to Tony Todd. We were Dracula. <laughs> uh, I love Tony Todd. I love Tony Todd. Oh, and yeah. I love Tom Savini. They're both so talented. I just, I much prefer the original. Oh, right? I definitely prefer the original, but the second, the, the remake is still an enjoyable movie. Mm. Yeah, I like Tony, anything Tony Todd. The Candyman series is mm-hmm. kind of a guilty pleasure. It's mm-hmm. not a fantastic movie series, but he's good. The, it's you know, beautiful. Yeah. The, especially the first one. The first one, yeah. The, the, the other, I don't think, there are some movies that don't need sequels. No. You should just kind of leave them alone. Right. But, you know. Um, Beth, any favorite remake or least yeah. favorite remake? Well, I mean, uh, before we jumped on air, we were talking about The Thing. Mm-hmm. Um, what thing? The Thing. Oh, the movie. The, okay, the yeah, thing. The Thing. Okay, yeah, sorry. No, I'm not at a loss for words. The Thing, uh, which was a fantastic movie. They did it so well. Originally titled The What's It? Yeah, <laughs> and, but didn't have the same punch. No. And I much prefer that to the original before that. You prefer The What's It? I, I do. No, I don't. Oh. I don't. It was horrible. Okay, gotcha. All right. <laughs> Bob? Well, uh, the remake I'm thinking of I probably enjoy as the best is one that a lot of times doesn't really get thought of as a remake, and that would be Evil Dead 2, uh, when in fact the first you know two-thirds of this film was a remake of the original film, but in more of the uh, splat stick uh, style that uh, Sam and Ted and the gang have kind of come up with. I do agree with that. Yeah, it was a great movie. It was really the start, if you think, of the funny horror film. I really can't think of uh, anything before that point that really took horror, uh, truly, you know, at times gruesome horror, but added just that Three Stooges ridiculous level of uh, physical acting to it Mm -hmm. and uh, I think developed a whole new twist on the genre. Bruce, he he developed that character in that movie. Uh, Ash came into his own in Evil Dead 2. Then we got Army of Darkness after that. And now which a was popular fun. series on stars. Which was no. fun. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, the, have Ash you seen versus the, the Evil Dead. Hmm? Have you seen the series? I haven't yet, no. Okay, you should, because it's, it's pretty good. It, it, it isn't like the, the remake, the Evil Dead remake mm. that just came out recently. It's more in uh, kin with the, the Evil Dead 2, I'd say, because it has that comedic element to it, but it's also terrifying. Right, they're in a second season of that right now, if right. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. It, while it has a few nods to Army of Darkness, implying that, yes, that's part of the canon, it's actually more of a direct sequel to Evil Dead 2 hmm. also. Right. Hmm. That's why I need to. I know the first season of that is out on DVD and Blu-ray. I'm have to uh, pick that up. We have a minute remaining. Joey V, do you have any favorite uh, horror movie? Or you know, I, I, I don't think we've ever discussed horror films. Are you a fan? We haven't discussed it. I love Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer for your insides getting all like, this is, I feel dirty watching this movie. Mm-hmm. It's too violent and realistic. But I think the, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake in 2003 really like blew my mind like I was expecting nothing. And then it, it was actually really good, in my opinion. That was and, with Jessica Biel? Yeah. Right? And that just, wasn't actually bad, yeah. And, and they even Arnie. got John Larroquette to do the narration again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And then what spawned the, the crappy sequels of that, again, just like the original yeah. Texas Chainsaw. So they're following in the footsteps. Maybe right. McConaughey will be in the next <laughs> Texas Chainsaw. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. But they're not going to have Dennis Hopper this time around. Oh. oh. All Two. right, P-Boss. Wow. <laughs> Way to bring it. So we're going out on a low note. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. We will go to commercial break. We will we, we'll be back. I'd like to buy a vowel. Let me try that again. We will be back shortly. As soon as I get over my stroke. Right here on Geek to Me Radio. Stand by. This is Paul McGann, the Eighth Doctor. You're listening to Geek to Me Radio. We are back on Geek to Me Radio, talking all things horror for our Halloween edition. If you'd like to call in, 855-770-1260. I do want to remind you all to mark your calendars for next Saturday. And I say this for a couple different reasons. First of all, you want to tune in on this show. We are going to have Burt Ward live on air with us, the original Robin from the 66 Batman series. This is the 50th anniversary of the original TV Batman series from the 60s. Exactly. He'll be on air with us. And if you call in... And ask Burt Ward a question. You will have your name put in a drawing to win the DVD slash Blu-ray copy of the new animated Batman 66 movie to which he has lent his voice talent along with Adam West and Julie Newmar. Evidently, Burgess Meredith was holding up for money, so he's not going to be able to be in... Oh, Oh, he's dead? He is quite dead. I feel kind of bad now. (laughs) (laughs) Come on. Go watch Grumpy Old Man. You'll be fine. Um, (laughs) Bacon sandwich. (laughs) So... We are talking about horror movies. and Oh, what I started to say is after, after you listen to the show with Burt Ward next Saturday, 7 o'clock out at the Schlafly Bottle Works, the event Capes and Tapes is taking place, sponsored by the Schlafly Bottle Works in partnership with Planet Score Records and Subculture Comics. They are having a huge sale at the Schlafly Bottle Works. People will be bringing their sundry goods, their toys, their comics, their music, their DVDs, their Blu-rays, their cassette tapes and vinyls, I'm assuming. And you can come down, check out everything. I will have a table set up. You can come down and uh, say hi to me or just avoid eye contact altogether, as most people do. That's fine. It's, again, 7 o'clock in the evening. Goes till 11.30 at night at the Schlafly Bottle Works. That is 2345 Southwest Avenue in Maplewood. And we had our friends Joe Stolz and Joe Watts from Planet Score Records and Subculture in last week talking about that. Back to the show, talking all things horror movies. Uh, Joey V brought up the Twilight Zone. You can't think of... I mean, it's, it's 50 years old plus some of those episodes, and they still hold up it's so well, well. I've got the entire series, and uh, someone asked me if you had to get rid of everything except one thing in your DVD Blu-ray collection. That's what I would keep is the Twilight Zone series. Okay, well, let me ask you this. What's your favorite episode? The Hitchhiker. Okay. The Hitchhiker is probably my favorite, followed by The Howling Man. Um, and talking about Burgess Meredith, Time yeah, Enough at Last. The one. That's the one. Uh, there's my and he was in, I think, three. One. He was in Time Enough at Last. He was in The Obsolete Man. And also... Um, I thought he was just in those two. No, he was in the one... Uh, Mr. Dingle the Strong. He was in that one as well. <sighs> and he did all of those before he died. That's true. He did. And he did all of his own stunts in those movies, too, I want to point out. So that was a fantastic bit of work there for him. But uh, so going around the room again, favorite Twilight episode, Ben. Well, gosh, I th- you just you just <laughs> mentioned it. It's stepping on the glasses at the end of that episode. It's just Time the last. craziest. And it's been parodied so many times. The Simpsons twist. have parodied it. Yep. Family Guy's parodied it. Yep, and of course you got to love the Gremlin on the wing of the plane. Episode. Ah, yes, Nightmare Twenty Thousand Feet. Yep, William, William Shatner. Shatner. Shatner, I just met her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> about time um but yes that's that's another fantastic shatner was in two episodes he was in that one and i now oh nick of time was the other one which was a creepy one because they had that little they go into that restaurant and the little fortune teller machine with the bobblehead devil on top yes. reads him his fortunes and keep telling him exactly what's about to happen and they almost get killed if he listens to the machine it was a very creepy episode that's a great one bob well, I would say Eye of the Beholder would probably be my Ooh, favorite. Yeah, uh, the woman who uh, has been recovering from a surgery with these horrendous injuries. When, Doctor? When can I take off the bandages? But uh, I guess my other favorite uh, one would, wouldn't exactly fall under creepy, but it would be uh, To Serve Man. Yes. Wasn't that Outer Limits? <laughs> no. no. That's one with Richard Keel, who played Jaws in the James Bond series, who was one right. of the aliens, the Canamites. 
Canamites with a K, Ben. Why are you looking at me like that? Canamites. But yeah, it's a great episode as well. I was um, just noting the resemblance. It's because of the, the forehead? The forehead. Yeah, yeah. You can show movies on this thing. I'm not proud. Um, Beth? Um, I really liked that uh, Twilight Zone episode where Robert Redford played Death. That one, I, I've not seen that one. That's one of the hour-long episodes, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I, yes, I believe so. Uh, it was fantastic. It's a you know, it's just minimally done, but it's so beautiful. Um, of course, you've got the episode where uh, the guy dies, doesn't realize it. He meets the guy on the side of the road. It turns out to be spoiler alert: the devil. And oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You can't come in. You've got to leave your dog. You got the out dog, there. right? Yeah. Oh, we just talked about that on Facebook. Classic right. episode. And uh, the escape clause was a very yes. good one. I love that one. <laughs> um, so yeah, there are just so many. I can't. I can't choose. Yeah, that one. And they were always on at night when I first started watching them. Uh, they were on like at. 11 o'clock at night on Channel 11 or something like mm. that. They do uh, two back-to-back. And one of the ones was, uh, I think it was 500 yards over the ridge, which the guy from 1880-something, they're traveling across in a wagon caravan. His boy is sick, and he says, I'm going to see if there's water over that ridge. And he goes over, and he's in, suddenly he's in 1960 Las Vegas. And he, he's thrown, the people who see him are thrown, and he gets back over the ridge and disappears back in 1888. But that was a really well-done episode as well. I think uh, I just got the high sign that we're going to break. In 30 seconds. So, again, if you want to call in, 855-770-1260. Tell us about your favorite Twilight Zone episode, favorite horror movie, favorite remake, least favorite remake, blood type, anything you want to talk to us about. (laughs) We'll take your calls. That's toll-free, 855-770-1260. And we'll be back after the break talking with Bill Finkbeiner, local actor who's done some indie horror movies. We'll be talking with him next. Stay tuned. Hello, my name is Sylvester McCoy. I want you to listen to Geek to Me Radio. Otherwise, if you don't, I'll cry. Don't make Sylvester McCoy cry, people. Tune in every week, 3 p.m., right here. And we are joined by another guest this hour. My friend Bill Finkbeiner is a uh, an actor. He has done several horror movies. And we were just talking here in the break. We were saying horror. So if that's why you're not calling in, maybe you thought I was talking about a different kind of movie. Uh, Bill, thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure, James. Thanks for having me on, man. Absolutely. So I think you just wrapped up a horror movie uh, last month. It was, uh, yeah, it was at the... Um Actually, it was what it was the end of August? Yeah, um, shot a movie over in Jefferson City of all places. Um, really, really hip little for, horror movie. Oh, pardon me, horror movie. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank can't you. Talk too much about it quite yet because of the NDA, but it's got a really, really unique twist on the genre. But it also uh, helps poke some inside jokes at the genre too. It's a lot of fun. Cool, cool. And that was uh, was that the one with Casper Van? Is that he? Yes, Casper Van? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. The movie's. I can say that the movie's name is Darkness Reigns. Find it on Facebook, search for it on the web, all those sorts of things. And yes, it does feature a prominent role of the one and only Casper Van Dien, which was really cool for me because I was a huge Starship Troopers fan. Yes, yes, absolutely. Huge. And you'd done another one. Um, I remember seeing you in the makeup, which was kind of uh, kind of scary in and of itself. From the, was it the bringer of things? Am I got that right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, the bringer of things. Uh, this one is kind of what's funny. Um, did the bringer of things a year ago in August, and it's a short film, uh, locally um, produced and directed. Um, Brian Cooksey uh, wrote it and directed it, and uh, the bringer of things is a nice little, you know, beware what you wish for sort of tale. But it was my first four-hour makeup job each day. Yeah, it was so literally sitting for four hours while the makeup's being applied and just figuring out how the heck to keep sitting for four hours. And you had the huge horns, and the uh, it was it was it was very creepy just to see you in that guy so i can only imagine the movie has that same kind of feel um the movie the movie can't like they did a great job of it It came off really well um it's kind of strange because of course you know in a smaller market like this we don't have two or three months to get ready for projects and stuff like that because we all have to keep our w-2 jobs and everything right but with uh with the bringer of things what was great was the fact that i didn't really know what was going to happen when i did it because i didn't have any time to walk around in that makeup and be that demon i almost said guy but be that demon um 
So it was kind of crazy because I had no idea how anything was going to go or turn out. And then by the time it screened um, here in St. Louis, I was just blown away by everything they did with the editing on it. And you've got, um, th- these aren't the only two horror films you've done. I feel like there was at least one or two more that you've actually, you're kind of built for that genre with, uh, I think, someone who was doing your makeup once referred to you, you have the body of an action figure. Yeah, that's, it helped, <laughs> uh, it helped a lot. Um, I've been really fortunate. Um, one of the great things about horror is that it has like just such a wide audience. And those of us who love it, we really do, whether we love like real intense, like Hollywood blockbuster horror, or whether we love like the crappy looks like it was done on an old VHS camera stuff. <laughs> um, there's definitely something that we all can get into. Um, one of the things that I really first noticed about doing horror was um, the second horror film I did was uh, with uh, one of the guys who's now out in um, Los Angeles, a guy uh, Sean Lass had written. And it was a little uh, werewolf thing. And actually, um, Ford Fantner, who is also in Darkness Reigns, uh, was in that one with me as well. And the first thing I noticed about doing horror movies is, for those of us throughout all the years who have ripped on horror or action movie actors for not being necessarily the most subtle of people, I just realized when you're running for your life 20 times in a row, sometimes you got to <laughs> work that up a little bit. Yeah, sure. That makes <laughs> because sense. Because literally, it's literally a different form of acting than it is for most of your things. You're doing your little comedy, you're doing um, your nice little drama. We're talking like this all the time. You know, stakes aren't very high. It's not, oh my gosh, this could be the end of my life for like five hours in a row. Right, right, right. So we were talking earlier with, uh, by the way, say hi to Bob, Ben, and Beth, Bill. Hello. Hi there. So hey there, Bill. Bob, Ben, and Beth. Oh yeah, so and then we've got Bill and we're on <laughs> BK Bob, on ben later, so I'm calling the show The Attack of the Killer Bees. But uh, you, nice. we were talking earlier about uh, our favorite horror movies. What's what's your absolute all-time favorite scary movie? Okay, I've got two answers for this because my first answer is going to seem non-traditional, but I swear it is a horror movie, and it's one of the scariest things I've ever seen. It actually left me disturbed and pacing around my house after I saw it. Those were my home movies, Bill. Let's not talk about that. Gidget? Well, yeah, we saw those before, but right. Seven is my all-time favorite horror movie. Good. Yes. Yeah. Good choice. Very good. Seven is one of the scariest things I've ever seen in my life. David Fincher is just the king of the serial killer movie. That and Zodiac. Oh, and Yeah, he's great. I thought it was amazing. And this is how twisted I was. All right, now I want to ask everybody else before like, I say what my answer was. What did you think was in the box? I okay, thought it was seven when he walked up at the box. What, what do you think it was? This can't be spoilers because the movie is about fifteen years old, so no, yeah. no spoilers. But I thought it was going to be his unborn child. Oh, see, I Ooh, just, James, I, we are twisted. <laughs> <laughs> I thought because that he, his, I thought too. his 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 Sorry, fiance guys, or girlfriend or whoever was was James pregnant. Yeah, no, the whole time. So yeah. I assumed that what was in the box. I thought oh, was yeah. okay. Well, I I thought it was Gwyneth's head. Me too. Okay. Okay. I thought maybe you it was... had people obviously won, but yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're James. We're just the ones that are a little more sick. But I yeah. swear, I was the whole time. I was like, "It's going to be his baby. It's going to be his baby. It's going to be his baby." Yep. I was like, "It's just your head." When you go down the rabbit hole, you got to go all the way. That's when I'm. You know, I just figured that's what it would be. That oh, been I it. fully agree on that. So one. you said that's not I your traditional agree. choice. That, but what what's your traditional yeah. horror choice then for number one? Um, my number one traditional one is the original Nightmare on Elm Street. Ah, Johnny Depp's first love, appearance. Yeah. <laughs> love, love, love the original Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, of course, saw that one, uh, I think right after it came out on video when I was a kid, because I was a little too young to be able to go and see it, but mm. just everything about it. Um, the Just the tiny things like the sound of the finger knives along the pipes and things, that was Oh, creepy. And Man, how about that uh, right Fresh now, Prince and DJ uh, song? Jazzy Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Nightmare on My Street. Well, Johnny Depp really made a oh, big yeah. splash in that flick, I thought. Oh, yeah. uh, it's kind of hard to merchandise, you know, your, like, you know, your dream serial killer, though, and things. It is, it's hard to come up with, like, crossover projects and whatnot. And speaking of crossover, it was 25 years in the making, but we finally got to see Freddy versus Jason, which I enjoyed. I thought it had a little bit of camp, a little bit of gore, a little bit of horror thrown in. I, I enjoyed it. It wasn't bad. It helped bring a little well, more. Every life Jason to story has yeah. to have some camp in it. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I had to say that. Uh, 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 can we talk about our favorite Elm Street? when he went to New York. Place? We can, yes. Okay. Yeah, but we are we are 30 seconds away from break. Uh, Bill, I thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. Good luck, and uh, I love seeing you in all your movies. You're a very talented guy, and uh, thanks for calling in today. 
Well, thanks, everybody. Also, remember, the St. Louis International Film Festival starts next weekend. Uh, I am in both Doubting, The Importance of Dining Tom with James Install and, of course, the Rebirth Batman fan film that's going to be on the 7th. Yes. Have a good one, everybody. Thank you, Bill. Take care. That was Bill Finkbeiner joining us live. And we are still in studio with Bob Singleton, Beth Rich, uh, Beth, <laughs> Beth Naki, and Ben Ritchie. I was going down the line and strike that, reverse kind of it. Meld together. Yeah. yeah. We'll be back with more after this right here on Geek to Me Radio. Stand by. It's just a jump to the left. Yes. We're back with the theme to Beetlejuice. Uh, right. Uh, <laughs> right here. James just wants us to hate On Geek Me Radio. And we're talking all things horror movies. We've got uh, our good friend BK on the air with us. On the air. BK, how you doing? Great, James. How you doing there, buddy? I'm doing well. Thank you. Uh, we're talking Halloween. You've got a Halloween special coming up on Halloween night down there at uh, WBHF. We do. Today was our last day before Halloween, and our Halloween special is Monday night, 9 to midnight. We're going to go for three hours and uh, talk uh, Halloween's memories, movies, and favorite candies and favorite costumes and all those great things growing up. And that can be found on, uh, you can go to the uh, TuneIn Radio app, pull up WBHF down there, and uh, always enjoy listening to your show. Your Halloween show is always fun, especially. And you too. we got the mornings and the afternoons all uh, bookmarked. Exactly right. That's right. Right. On Saturday. Every Saturday. Yeah. A full Saturday of geekiness. So we were talking before uh, you came on about our favorite horror movies. Do you have a favorite horror movie? You know, I do have a favorite one, but, but I've just got three right off the bat that have uh, something about ghosts that uh, when it's done well, it sends like a shiver up my spine. I guess I would have to choose the number one uh, is a uh, standard it's a it's a Stephen King story, but it's a Stanley Kubrick movie, and that's The Shining. The Shining. That was the one with the guy from Wings starting that one, wasn't it? <laughs> In the miniseries. Uh, no, that's, yeah. <laughs> well, that was a miniseries, yeah. Right. No, I'm, of course, teasing. Yeah, that's a classic, The Shining. Yeah, Jack yeah. Nicholson. It is. And we just saw The Shining. It was released, uh, Warner uh, Brothers released it in the theater mm-hmm. through the Fathom Events, and we saw it last week. It was fantastic seeing up on the big screen again with the remastered sound and everything. It's truly a horror it, it is a horror film. There's so much horror involved in that story that it's that it's uh, it's hard to it's hard to not let it stay with you after you've seen it again. Agreed, absolutely. And you said you've got a you've got a couple on your list that would make your top three round them out. Yeah, yeah the other two with ghosts that I would have to choose. Uh, the other one would have to be um, a lot of people love John Carpenter. He's a great filmmaker, and all of his movies are. Are, are so uh, the guy directs like nobody else. But um, a lot of people love Halloween, his first major big film that finally hit big in 1978. Mm-hmm. I have to choose as my favorite John Carpenter movie, uh, The Fog, <laughs> because The Fog is an eerie and chilling movie. Yes. Yeah. Ben. With ben just mouthed the words The <laughs> Fog. Ben thought you were he was he precogged that you were going to say The Fog. <laughs> Right. That's correct. The Fog is fantastic. I mean, it, was, it wasn't as popular as Halloween was in some of the other movies, but Jamie Lee Curtis, and uh, it's, it's another movie about a, a bunch of uh, a, a ghosts from, a, you know, a, a, an old uh, from a ship, ship coming back. And the whole story is just uh, chilling. And the third one I love, which includes uh, ghosts, is uh, Toby Hooper's uh, Poltergeist. Poltergeist oh, is yes. another movie that is not, not soon forgotten after you've seen it. Yes. Several scenes stay with you. Yes, that was also a classic. I thought you were going to say "Hold that ghost" with Abbott and Costello. <laughs> that's a perennial favorite. Hey, that scared me as a kid. Tell you, it was pretty scary when I was a kid. Right? Yeah, that's that's probably hands down my favorite Abbott and Costello movie. Hold that ghost. Really good. It is, it is one of the best. But I defy anybody not to be creeped out when they watch Poltergeist when the guy rips his face off in front of the mirror. That yes, just, that just totally fit. creeps me out every time I watch it. Yes, absolutely. We are at the end of the broadcast. BK, thank you for joining us. Make sure you catch BK on the air using the TuneIn Radio app. WBHF, search him out. Thanks very much for coming on with us, BK. Awesome, dude. Thanks for having me. Thank you. We'll be back with more next week on Geek to Me Radio. That's a show.
Thank you, St. Louis. Good night.